Hello everyone, today I would like to share a test that is uh, using existing Windows 7 upgrade to Windows 10 Pro system. Uh, in this Windows 7 system, it is installed Siemens TI Portal version 12, 13, 14, 15, 15.1, and the version 16. As we know, the support for Windows 7 is coming to an end on January 14, 2020. In recent months, that will be a peak time for industry users upgrade their Windows 7 system to Windows 10. And in my system, that is a Windows 7 Ultimate system. And in this system, I installed TI Portal from version 12 to version 16. And before we upgrade this system, Let's check out the compatibility tool from Siemens website. If we type in support.industry.siemens.com and then we select compatibility tool, let's select download of operating system compatibilities. Because the system will target to Windows 10, let's select the Windows 10 and download. After we download this list, this list shows all the Siemens system that compatibilities with the Windows 10 system. Let's scroll down to 301. This table shows all those versions the compatibilities with the Windows 10. And from here we can see that version 12 that TI Portal version 12 is not showing here, and version 16 is not showing here. And version 16, that's because version 16 is very new. Maybe it's haven't updated in this table yet, but version 12 is not showing here. That means version 12, maybe Siemens haven't tested yet, or maybe this version is not compatible with Windows 10. However, in my system, I already installed TI Portal 12. So after we upgrade the system to Windows 10, I want to check if the TI Portal version 12 is still working in Windows 10. Other than the compatibility check, we'd better upgrade all your existing TI Portal to the latest service pack and updates. To upgrade the TI Portal, we can go to Start, select the Siemens Automation, and hit the TIA Upgrade. This TIA Software Updater will automatically check the online updates, including service pack and the updates. And before we upgrade the system, we need to make sure your C drive is still enough. We'd better leave a 20 gigabyte for installation. After that, we go to this website, www.microsoft.com. You can search Download Windows 10 Update. And we need to download this tool that named Create Windows 10 Installation Media. We download this tool. After we download this tool, it named the Media Creation Tool 1909. And then let's double click to start a Windows upgrade. So from here, basically, we follow the sequence and hit the next to read the terms and hit the OK go to the next, process all the procedures. The whole process might take uh, one hour at least.
from here, the step reach to a milestone. That means now it's ready to install the Windows 10. So the installation is almost finished. The system will restart automatically. So this restart may take uh, several times. Every time it starts, it will install the Windows 10 as well as install the updates. The Windows 10 started and we log in the system. And this is the first time we log in the system successfully. Once you log in this Windows 10 system, you'll find this screen is really short and really small. That's because this is a virtual machine comes from Windows 7. And that time Windows 7 installed the VMware tool based on the Windows 7 uh, drive. And after we upgrade Windows 10, we need to reinstall the VM tools based on the Windows 10 drive. Let me show how to do that. We go to the manager, reinstall VMware tools, select this. Let's double click this the VMware tools. And in the first step, I will prefer to remove the existing tools and then restart a brand new one for Windows 10. So the second time we install again, this time select a typical or complete to install a VMware tool for Windows 10. After the install, let's restart the system. And you can see that after it's installed it, so the system already become bigger. The screen already become the bigger. So after the system restart, we can reset the screen resolution. Set the resolution to match your screen. And we can see that the screen go to the full screen. Let's reinstall the VMware tool to solve this uh, small screen problem. After we install the Windows 10 successfully, we need to test if the TI Portal version 12 still can work under the Windows 10. So I have a actual controller that is version 2.2, 1BD30. So let's use the version 12 use, let's use the TI Portal version 12 to go test. We create a project. Create a project here.
And firstly, we can go online. Firstly, let's test the communication between the version 12 and the actual controller. So we can see that this software already communicated with the actual controller. This controller IP address is 1.192.168.0.10. And the version is 2.2. Let's add a S1200 controller station. Click Add a New Device. And then select a 1212. This is my actual controller. Two one two one BD thirty zero X B one B zero version is two point two. From this drop list, we can see that TI Portal version twelve can configured from version one point zero to two point two. The TI Portal from version thirteen that can only configured from version two point two. Some old version controller, the version 13 can no longer configure that. So the TI Portal version 12 is still valuable to stay in operating system. So let's select the 2.2 and click the OK. And let's set up uh, the IP address of this controller. We set 192.168.0.10. And let's set up a very simple logic. Let's try to download this simple logic and try to test the communication. The first bit, I'm 20.0, I'm 20.1, I'm 20.2. After finish programming, let's hit the save, compile the project, and get ready to download. Select the PE IE. Select the Okay, the system already found this controller. Click the download, so our offline con our offline program will download to the controller. So here, because we need to download the controller plus the hardware and the software, so the controller need to restart it. Click load, and stop the controller override all and then restart the controller. Okay, now the controller already in run mode. Let's test the communication and let's test the logic to see if the version 12 TI portal can test the controller. We can see that everything shows fine. So the version 12 can communicate with the actual controller. And we can program use this version 12 in Windows 10. So we just done a test that is the TI Portal version 12 communication between the actual controller. Next step, we will use a S7 1500 to test 
the PLC SIM communication. We will download the 1500 program and hardware to a PLC SIM. So we use the old version, version 1.1 controller. In the same way, we will program very simple logic under this controller. We use the similar logic. M20.0, 0.1, and 0.2. And save the project, compile, no error, and then we start the simulation. So this is simulation software, the TI portal will automatically call version 12 PLC SIM. Let's create a project under this uh, PLC theme. Here we create the version 12 simulation file and project. Let's download the configuration and program to this uh, PLC theme. Select the PLC theme 1200 slash S7 1500 and here the software already detect uh, the simulation software here. Hit the load. The configuration will load into the PLC sim. Load. Start. If we hit the online, Everything shows green here. That means the TIA portal software already communicate with the PLC SIM, the simulation software. If we go to the OB1, the programming wise, let's go online for the program. So from here, if we hit the set to modify to one, so we see that the M20.2 already be controlled. So that means the TI portal version 12 can communicate with the PLC SIM in Windows 10. They are all working. So this is the whole process, the operation, and we also did an additional test based on the TI portal version 12. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.